Welcome to a documentary which seeks to expose the sexual violation of animals who are used as breeding slaves for the meat, dairy and egg industries. Many of you may think that the dairy industry is the only industry to commit rape and violation of animals, but it is actually a fundamental part of all industries which produce animal products. In fact, without sexual abuse, animal agriculture does not exist. So today let's begin with one of the most obvious and well-known industries built off of sexual abuse and animal slavery, the shameful dairy industry. In the dairy industry, stud balls are used for their semen. Semen collection generally begins at around 11 to 12 months old. A male teaser animal is at times used for mounting and the handler uses an artificial vagina for semen collection. So basically they get a very young male animal sexually aroused and jack him off to take his semen. According to Farmers Weekly magazine, the stud bulls have access to a sand arena and playpen for exercise to keep them fit and healthy. Ah, oh, so you give them a sand pen and some straw in exchange for sexual acts? That's not disturbing at all. In artificial insemination centres, bulls are typically collected two or three times per week, with two or three ejaculates per collection day. Bull handlers do not get involved in routine health treatments, so bulls only associate them with pleasurable activities. In some cases, stockmen have allocated bulls so they can build up a relationship based on mutual respect and trust. Um, okay, sounds like literal bestiality. Mutual respect? Doesn't mutual imply both parties are consenting? Animals are not capable of giving consent, just like children. Some bulls are still producing viable sperm at 14 years old. 14 years of sex slavery? And what happens to the stud bulls when you're done molesting them? They get retired to the local slaughterhouse and get turned into steak? This is painting a very disturbing picture already. Another disturbing way to retrieve semen from stud bulls is through electro-ejaculation. We've examined the bull, everything, so we're ready to do the collection. So Dr. Carpenter's gonna place the probe in the rectum for us. And according to veterinary sites, electro-ejaculation is now the safest and standard method of semen collection used by trained veterinary surgeons in the UK. The process goes as follows. A large probe is inserted into the rectum of the restrained animal as it delivers a current of electricity into the nerves of his anus until he ejaculates into the hand of a vet or farmer who is holding a vial for collection. This is usually collected using the electro-ejaculator. He's placed some lubricant on the probe. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the uh, ejaculator and you will probably see the bull react. Bond a little bit here. You can pull that pipe up one if you want to. And hopefully we will get an erection. Uh, you can see that he's reacting more so and he is putting out quite a lot of prostate fluid and... Now notice his penis is starting to protrude. So always make sure we examine that penis. Now, this, now the bull's starting to ejaculate somewhat. Here you can see some of the clear fluid coming out during the collection. And we'll keep repeating this process five to ten times in order to get a nice collection from this bull. So there, we have, we've got our bull collected now. There, there was no pain associated with it, no anguish, uh, very minimal stress. Um, okay, so you restrain the animal in a cattle crush and rape him with an electric dildo until he ejaculates? Sounds like these farmers have a very distorted sense of what caring for animals actually means. This is just sodomy and molestation. Imagine what's going through their minds as they're being restrained and penetrated. These animals are vulnerable like children and must be left feeling violated and confused. In order for cows to produce milk, they have to be pregnant or have recently given birth. Dairy farmers like to control this process themselves. Cows will show they're on heat by standing to be mounted and may have some mucus on the towel and around their vulva. Farmers might use paint or chalk to see if the cows have tried to mount each other. You're looking for differences in the chalk or chalk that may have been rubbed off to indicate that the cow may be in heat. After determining which cows are on heat, the farmer or vet will restrain the animal in a cattle crush. It's not comfortable for the cow to have an arm shoved into her near shoulder deep, so they have to be held down for safety reasons, apparently. One of the most disturbing parts of this whole process is the cow's age. We're talking about very young, vulnerable animals. How confused and scared they must be. With the help again of the popular Farmers Weekly magazine, here's a step-by-step -step process for the legally sanctioned sexual abuse of cows. On the farm, our first choice for breeding our cows is artificial insemination, which is the veterinary procedure of placing semen into the uterus. 
first, stick on a full length arm glove and lubricate it. The farmer or vet will prepare the cow by wiping clean her vulva with a paper towel. Now, they'll form a cone with their fingers and insert their arm into the rectum of the cow while keeping the towel aside. Of course, not forgetting to work out any excess poop. So you can see there's manure inside the rectum. So the first thing I'll do is clean out that manure and then try to clear out any air or anything. From here, I can clean out any manure that's in their rectum. What is? Now, they'll locate the cervix of the cow through the wall of the anus and use downward elbow pressure to part the lips of the vulva and guide in the AI gun until there's a release of resistance. The semen will be deposited near the uterine horns where the cervix ends and the uterus begins. The end goal is to get your gun through the rings of the cervix into the uterus and then deposit the semen right there. Then right away, get the semen into the cow so that it stays warm. And that's how farmers rape animals so they can steal their milk and children. The process is repeated and repeated until the animals are no longer of economic use to the farmer and they'll be sent off to be murdered for their flesh. Now, I know how uncomfortable it is to hear this process being explained to you. It's even uncomfortable for me to be explaining this. But just for a moment in your feeling of discomfort, just imagine what it feels like to actually have this done to yourself. Put yourself in the animal's position a young, childlike, conscious being Oh, that is super. being restrained and violated. What a sick way to treat our fellow earthlings for products we don't need. I feel deeply embarrassed at the actions of our race. Stud boars used for semen collection or for mating with females are often kept in cages, similar to sow stalls. Naturally, pigs would usually select their mate and when to breed, but these decisions are completely controlled and manipulated by human exploiters in the pork industry. The artificial insemination method is used by many pork producers. The boars are generally trained to mount a dummy partner for arousal. The boar mounts the stool. He's been trained before when he was younger. He's about 10 months old now. And you can see now he's jumping the stool. The pig has the second longest orgasm of any animal and the camel has the longest orgasm. And we're about to see the second longest orgasm in the process now. Then, the collector will squeeze and massage the prepus or foreskin of the boar to expel the fluid that can accumulate there to collect the semen in the collection device. Boars actually have a small sac right here inside their prepuce that can collect fluid and sometimes urine. This is the reason that vigorous massage on the prepuce prior to semen collection is important to clean out all of that fluid. Collected the semen. <laughs> wow, jacking off pigs in the pork industry is common practice. Who would have thought? The semen is then stored in preparation for AI in breeding cells. The UK has been known to export large amounts of frozen pig semen to places like China. As a result of the significant increase in semen demand, Places like Derpak Pedigree Pigs is now undergoing expansion. Again, I ask the question, what happens to the stud boars when their semen production declines? Do they get a visit to the local gas chamber or a date with the electric stunning clamps and a butcher's knife in the throat? Let's move on to the process for the female pigs, the sows. Breeding sows generally go into heat at the very young age of six to eight months old. After heat detection, which some farmers have a more hands-on approach to determining, the AI process will begin. The backyard method of AI involves sitting on the backside of the sow to mimic the mating process and inserting a catheter which mirrors the shape of a boar's penis. Let's not use euphemisms here, it's essentially a pig's dildo filled with ejaculate. During PCAI, a foam tip or spiral tipped outer catheter is inserted into the vulva through the vagina and placed in the first two interdigitating pads of the cervix. A dead pig's vagina used as an educational prop. It's also very disturbing to see a family getting a small child involved in this process, which really shows how early animal abusers are indoctrinated and taught to exploit animals. Hands 
the semen. Breeding tube, did you lubricate it? Locks into the cervix. A more commercial operation might employ the use of a raised catheter, referred to as a pork stalk or an AI saddle, which is a very bizarre instrument indeed. Here's some footage from Australia which shows the worker trying to mimic the boar by sitting on the pigs behind and also using a boar to stimulate the breeding cells. After impregnation, sows will be sent to either a gestation crate, sow stall, or group housing, depending on the country's guidelines. This is where the sows will spend their pregnancy before being moved to the horrific sparrowing sheds after having their litter. As you can see, these animals stand no chance against their human oppressors and are being violated and raped so that consumers can enjoy a morsel of their flesh. How is this sexual abuse and predation allowed and sanctioned by the government? How do you feel knowing that when you pay for animal products, you are funding animal abusers to molest animals? Sheep are most commonly exploited for their flesh and their wool. In terms of sexual exploitation, sheep have proved to be a little more difficult to find information on, which is raising suspicion. From the research we have conducted, AI is not the most common form of impregnation for sheep. However, in recent years, it's clearly becoming more widely advocated to farmers. According to Farmers Weekly, Increasing numbers of sheep producers are following in the footsteps of their dairy counterparts by using artificial insemination as a means of improving genetic traits in their flocks. Generally, ram masturbation and semen collection will carry out as follows. A teaser ewe will be restrained in a headstool. A ram is then let into the collecting area. Rams will be allowed to express their sexual behaviours towards the restrained ewe while the semen collector crouches behind them with an artificial vagina in their hand. We fill it up with hot water so it keeps it at, a, at the right temperature. We have these, we put that in there. And this is just to keep it all warm as well. And that is what we use. Very simple and very effective. The ram then mounts the ewe. The human will then use their left hand to deflect the penis away from the used vagina and into the artificial vagina. The prepuce should not be grabbed or yanked towards the AV, but rather gently guided in. A final upwards pelvic thrust signifies ejaculation. Donna will take around five collections of semen from the rams each day, a task that can prove to be somewhat challenging. The semen will then be stored for the disturbing artificial insemination process. Looks like the semen collector was having quite a good time considering how inappropriate and bizarre this whole process is. If that wasn't weird enough, the insemination process for the female sheep is even weirder. There are multiple ways for sheep to be artificially inseminated, including vaginal, cervical, and laparoscopic. Laparoscopic AI is typically favored in the UK because semen is deposited directly into the uterus, making conception rates higher, and frozen semen can be used. In the laparoscopic method, the U is restrained upside down in a terrifying, medieval-like contraption called an AI cradle. Right, so the old here is um, clipped and surgically prepared. Um, we make a small incision on the left and a small incision on the right. Uh, we use a, a 10 millimeter um, throw here. That's what we use to make the incision on the left hand side. That's the side that the scope will go through. She is then cut into on the left and right hand side above her udder. Right, and the goat's blunt. It goes in. A camera is then inserted to view the womb. The sheep appears to be conscious and is moving around in an uncomfortable way as the man pumps gas to displace the stomach and intestines. 
the U.S. Ryan Horan Center moving into position. The semen is then probed and prodded into the right hand side of the U. AI is becoming increasingly advocated over the old school way of breeding because a ram with good quality semen, adequate testicular size, and a good libido can breed up to 100 ewes in a season, whereas artificial insemination can magnify the breeding potential and genetic influence of a single ram by many times. So one ram could be used over several hundred ewes, rather than possibly that one ram being used over just 50 ewes. So we're able to spread that ram's, those elite ram's genetics across a lot more ewes and have a greater genetic influence. What is seemingly a more common practice for breeding sheep involves the following. The ewes have their reproductive organs exploited through the controlling of their cycle and sponging. Sponging synchronizes the ewes so they all come into mating season at the same time. And then this is the little applicator. Like you're using the same applicator on all the ewes, so this kind of cleans it, but it's a lubricant too. So I just do that. And then it's all moved up. Insertion should be easier. Sponges infused with progesterone are lubricated and then penetrated into the vagina of non-consenting animals. Two weeks later, the sponges are removed and the sheep are injected with PMSG to increase ovulation. Um, Brian will also be administering PMSG. The ram is then introduced to the herd to have his way with the young female sheep. Sheep are branded with paint to show that they have been successfully mounted by the ram. When these sheep are no longer a profit to the farmer, they are all of course sent to be brutally executed and decapitated in a slaughterhouse. All I see here is human domination, manipulation, exploitation and violation of vulnerable and defenceless animals so they can be murdered for monetary gain. All you need to do to really see how disturbing and unjustified this behaviour is, is to put yourself in the animal's position. Let's start with broiler chickens. Broiler chickens are specifically raised to be murdered for their flesh. Broiler chicks come from their parent breeders who are kept in specific sheds for breeding. Parent birds are raised and kept until approximately 64 weeks and produce about 160 fertile eggs. These eggs will hatch and produce the meat chicken flocks whose flesh is processed for human consumption. The most common practice for breeding parent birds is the introduction of roosters to the barn. There is typically one male to every 10 breeder hens placed in a laying barn. Roosters are known to be aggressive around other males and towards hens when mating. So to introduce so many of them to overcrowded confined sheds can only be described as cruel as the birds have no way of escaping each other. One of the most harrowing accounts I've ever seen from inside a parent breeding shed is from animal liberation activist Paddy Marks. Many of the hens at this shed are red raw. They have, there's no feathers on their backs at all. They've been repeatedly raped by the roosters. It's a common practice in the um chicken industry that when the hens are getting old to increase their productivity, they kill all the roosters at about 50 weeks of age and bring in young roosters to make the hens to get further eggs out of them. What Paddy described is called spiking a flock. Older males are removed and slaughtered and younger males are introduced who are more sexually active. The breeding hens really don't get a break and are repeatedly mated. A less common but still practiced method for breeding farm birds is AI. And for this practice, most farm birds undergo a similar process. First, let's explore the process for semen collection from the rooster. The rooster is pinned down, unable to move, and is massaged to stimulate the copulatory organ, or the phallus. This is followed quickly by pushing the tail forward with one hand, and at the same time, using the thumb and forefinger to apply pressure to the area where the semen is then milked. Near to the testes, uh, and you're going to want to stroke in that spot to stimulate the rooster. And you do that for just like a couple minutes and then squeeze with your thumb and forefinger when you can see him uh, extending a little organ. Um, and you should get this uh, liquid here, which the rooster will actually suck in if you're not careful. Just about the right size for uh, sucking up any of the sperm that you get. Sometimes you can get a second go on a rooster, but it's not too common. He usually does it for me. This here is just blatant bestiality. This poor rooster has been sexually molested to have his sperm stolen. I wonder if this woman finds it weird or perverse to be holding down a defenseless being and sexually arousing him. Now, onto the hen. Again, here the hen is restrained. Her cloaca is exposed and a pipette with semen is inserted into her vagina. Can you imagine what this would be like 
held down against your will and forcefully penetrated, how confused and terrified these birds must be. Parent birds are systematically exploited for their reproductive systems and have their eggs taken away and placed in an incubator, which is an artificial way of hatching. When broiler chicks are just a day old, they're transported in modules called chick boxes from the hatchery to the rearing farm. The chicks are placed in the rearing sheds and kept in large mixed sex flocks. 10,000 to 20,000 birds or many more are kept in a single shed. The chicks are slaughtered at an extremely young age at around six to seven weeks old. These are just little babies in overgrown bodies. In the meantime, parent breeders spend their life going through a distressing cycle of reproduction, kept in laying sheds being mated where they rarely see the light of day and then, at the end of it all, are murdered to be eaten by the unaware consumer. Egg-laying hens follow a similar distressing life of reproductive slavery. Chicken breeds specific to egg-laying are born in a hatchery. The males are deemed useless and do not produce eggs, so they are destroyed via maceration or gassing and the females are moved to a rearing site. A small number of males will be spared the macerator in order to serve with a selection of hens as parent birds, laying and fertilizing the eggs for the hatchery. The other hens are sent out to egg farms across the country. Here, they will spend their life laying eggs almost daily, which puts enormous strain on their internal organs. At around 60 to 70 weeks of age, egg production will slow down and the hens will be sent to the slaughterhouse. Artificial insemination of turkeys is similar to that of chickens, but is standard practice worldwide. Turkeys have been selectively bred to grow twice their natural size and are now too heavy and overgrown to naturally mate, so must now be artificially reproduced. Just like the rooster, the male turkey or stag is pinned down, has his phallus fiddled around with in true bestiality style and his semen is sucked out via a pipette. In this semen collection class, you can see that the turkey is forcefully pinned down and masturbated. If you only get most of the semen in the first squirt, not a you lot of semen, but it's the first time he's been done. Hold, 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 hold. Gonna help you out Here's a woman sucking the semen from the male to be inseminated into the female. The female turkey is restrained and the semen is forced into her. So I'll put a bit of pressure on her there. Take your time, Penny. I'm enjoy holding I'm it like this. I'm just showing this. people there. You don't need that. Right. Take That's your time. Plenty. Oh, the turkey could be enjoying it too. <laughs> As you can see, she's shaking and so terrified that she shits herself. How can we think that this is acceptable to put animals through this vile, perverted process to impregnate them against their will and without their consent? Now the guys are doing my uh, artificial insemination. Uh, they do between five and 600 birds an hour. Uh, each bird gets artificial inseminated once a week. We have four barns, so we do this uh, four days a week. Recently, technologies have been introduced to make female penetration more efficient for large-scale insemination. This involves an insemination bench where the turkey is clamped down and molested. We could find turkey AI footage from nearly all over the world. But wait, what about the UK? With around 14 million turkeys slaughtered in the UK for meat in 2017 alone, and it being standard practice to artificially inseminate turkeys in the UK, where's all the UK footage? What's the matter, UK turkey farmers? Are you too afraid to show us how you fiddle around with turkeys' private parts for profit? Where's all the UK evidence of high welfare turkey molestation? That's right, not even the fish are safe from humans and their lust to dominate, control and commodify through the exploitation of the reproductive organs of every animal on earth. According to the UN Food and Agricultural Organization 2018 Fishery and Aquaculture Stats, the contribution of farm fish to total fish use has risen over the years, reaching 46.8% in 2016, up from 25.7% in 2000. This figure amounts to about 80 million tonnes of farmed food fish annually, compared to about 90 million tonnes of wild captured fish. Farm fish have recently superseded wild capture fisheries as the main source of seafood for human consumption. While almost all farm fish production is destined for human consumption, the proportion from wild capture fisheries now stands at around 78%. Salmon consumption worldwide is three times higher than it was in 1980. Salmon aquaculture is the fastest growing food production system in the world accounting for 70%, that's 2.5 million metric tons of the market. It is scientific consensus that fish are sentient beings who feel pain and suffer. So please understand that this process 
Although it may not look like it to you, as we all express pain differently, I can assure you these fish are suffering. Salmon are removed from the water where they'll immediately begin to suffocate and are thrust onto a conveyor belt into a factory-like setting. These animals are sorted and the female is stunned via an automated percussive system, which is the predominant method used for stunning commercially, whereby an air-powered hammer-shaped cylinder delivers a forceful blow to the head of each female salmon. The female is then sacrificed in a brutal fashion. Her stomach is sliced open and her eggs are removed. When they're ready to spawn, we'll, we'll kill that fish, and then, which sounds really rough. Male salmon who are ready for spawn are then milked or essentially masturbated into the container of salmon roe, which is then mixed, ready for incubating. Catfish is the leading aquaculture produced seafood product in the US. The annual harvest of farm raised catfish in the US is at least twice as much as the annual aquaculture production of all other species of fish and shellfish combined. Annual production over the last decade has ranged from about 500 to 650 million pounds. The stripping of female catfish is a procedure where the animal is taken out of the water and dried with a towel with the cloaca exposed. A finger is then run down the underbelly to push eggs out of her into a bucket. The male spawner has to be sacrificed an hour prior to the stripping of the female eggs to obtain the milt, which in catfish cannot be gotten through the same stripping process. The procedure on the male fish is carried out by cutting open the abdominal area to expose the testes for easy dissection. The milt, or fish semen, is then extracted and mixed in with the eggs to fertilize them ready for incubation. Now that was absolutely awful. Global farmed shrimp production in 2016 was more than 5.7 million tonnes. The top importers of shrimp, both farmed and wild caught, are the European Union and the United States. Now one of the weirdest things I've ever seen since I've been looking into the ways humans sexually exploit animals is seeing a shrimp being jacked off by a human. Although it's uncertain at how common this practice actually is, the fact that it's even practiced at all is just weird. Apparently the procedure for artificial insemination in shrimp goes as follows. A female shrimp with mature eggs or ovaries is selected. The male shrimp is essentially jacked off to extract the sperm mass from the spermatophore and the prawn semen is then inserted into the female. Now come on, this is just getting out of control. The last animal, or more like insect, I'd like to feature is the small but significant honeybee. And I'll let my friend Sonia say explain this part. Hi everyone, bees will only produce honey if they have a queen. Queen bees are often artificially inseminated, which means that the honey industry first kills by crushing and squeezing a male bee to take out his semen and then they forcibly insert it in the queen bee's vagina. Wow, is there an animal on earth we haven't sexually exploited for our own gain? I don't know how many actual parents are watching, but I damn sure know that almost everyone had a parent of their own at some stage of their life. So it really shouldn't be hard for you to empathize with the trauma that these animals have to go through when their families are torn apart. Dairy cows experience serial rape and kidnap through their five to eight years of milk production. The calves will generally take the first drink of the udder called the colostrum, and after this, they are separated from their mother to ensure no further milk is taken so that profits are maximized. Here she is behind me here, she just lost her child, that's probably one of the saddest things I had to witness, that poor innocent little calf. The kidnapping of calves happens across the board in all commercial and backyard dairy farms. It is arguably one of the cruelest things you could do to a mother. The only time you'll ever see these gentle animals show anything close to aggression is when they're having their calves taken from them. Not sure what it is about this pasture this year, but these cows have not wanted us around when it comes to tagging these calves. It's 
pretty little calf. Little calf is trying to get out. Here's just a little heifer. But you're trying to tag calves, and a cow just wants to eat you! Ah! I just want to tag your baby! <laughs> I just want to tag your baby! The mothers can be heard pining for their young for up to five days after their baby has been taken and in some cases, the calves are left in hutches not too far from their mothers. Just across the road here, not even 10 metres away, are the mother cows. How horrific to be separated so close too, so they can hear each other. Look at this little angel. psychological trauma these animals go through can only be imagined. Mothers have been known to put up a fight for the first two or three times their calves are taken, but after that, they may lose hope and stop fighting. Male calves are either shot in the head on their first day of birth, or raised for veal or beef, where they'll be executed and dismembered in a hellhole murder factory. Look at this. This baby here, chucked in the bin a piece of garbage. Abducted female calves will suffer the same fate as their mother. Cereal raped for their stolen baby's milk year after year until their production declines and they too are murdered for their flesh. 50% of all cow flesh in the UK comes from murdered slaves of the dairy industry. After giving birth to their litter, pregnant sows are kept in farrowing crates where they cannot turn around. The mothers are kept here for up to five weeks while their piglets are suckling. I've been in farrowing sheds and I can tell you from experience. These are the most disgusting prisons of pure suffering I've ever seen. This lady here looks like she can't even stand up. She looks exhausted. Absolutely exhausted. Pigs are known to suffer deep psychological trauma from being in confined spaces. Pigs are usually clean animals, but are forced to live in their own waste. Crushed and dead piglets in the crate with the mother are not uncommon. So right next to her face in the feed tray is one of her dead piglets. How horrible. And she cannot even get up or try to help or do anything. It's almost better to have died young than to have lived a life like this. Once weaned, the piglets will be taken to weaner sheds to be fattened up for the pig flesh industry and will generally be murdered at about five to six months old. Pigs would naturally live to about 15 years, but breeding sows in the pork industry barely make it past three years. They suffer a constant cycle of forcible impregnation, gestation, horrifying farrowing crates, and the despair of experiencing the serial abduction of their young. When sows are spent and no longer economically viable, these exploited mothers will go to a gas chamber where they will suffer and die and their bodies will be used for secondhand cuts of meat for foods like sausage rolls. This is how the meat industry treats mothers. After around a four to five month pregnancy, a ewe gives birth. The lambs are generally removed from their mother at around two to four months old. <laughs> A 2019 study shows that mother sheep form strong and exclusive bonds with their offspring. So, it could be argued that the connection with their young has had more time to form and the suffering from the loss is magnified. Lambs under natural conditions nurse for at least six months. The abducted lambs will either go on to be breeding sheep or they'll be reared for their flesh. A disturbing fact, many lambs are aborted, stillborn, or die from disease, exposure and starvation. In the UK, as many as 15% of lambs do not survive. After spring lambing, the ewe mothers will then only have a few months before autumn tupping, when the process starts all over again. So again, an endless cycle of emotional suffering and kidnap of their children until the breeding mothers face the same fate as every other animal exploited in the meat industry. They'll be murdered for their bodies. Broiler chickens are raised specifically for their flesh. The parent breeders are exploited for their reproductive systems and have their eggs taken away upon laying. In natural circumstances, the mother hen would help the chicken hatching and raise her chicks from there on. The heartbreaking reality 
is that the mother will never have a chance to meet her chicks and instead follows a continuous cycle of distress. Her reproductive system is exploited over and over until she's no longer profitable and she too is murdered for her flesh. Egg laying hen parent breeders will in the same way never see their eggs hatch. They will be repeatedly mated by introduced roosters have their reproduction system continuously exploited until they are completely exhausted, their egg production declines, and they too will have their throats slashed open in the slaughterhouse. Upon hatching, chicks in the egg industry will be separated based on sex. Studies show that chicks are able to recognize their siblings upon hatching. So to be separated at birth is a distressing reality for newborns, but the male chick's distress will be short-lived, as immediately after sorting, they are dropped fully conscious into a macerator, where they are blended up alive. The females will become egg-laying slaves until their production declines and they too will be executed just like their parents, and their exhausted, suffered bodies will be eaten by human beings. Oh my God, that's so good. So as you can see, sexual or reproductive abuse is not the only integral part of animal agriculture. The separation and murder of families is standard and necessary for commercial farmers to maximize their profits. Again, I ask you to please put yourself in the animal's position. Try to feel what it would be like to have your family torn apart. Why, I want to see your baby. You are just so protective, aren't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. Ask yourself, is that cheese worth a life of misery? Is that bacon sandwich worth a mother's pain and anguish? Are those eggs worth a life of slavery and a certain brutal death for an animal you may never meet? Please understand that these industries only exist because of you, the consumer, and the power is in your hands to stop this. What is insane to me is that although these practices seem to be legally sanctioned, we can also find laws across the Western world which strictly prohibit sexual acts with an animal, AKA bestiality. Bestiality is defined as sexual relations between a person and an animal. Bestiality laws in the UK are as follows. Whosoever shall be convicted of the abominable crime of buggery committed either with mankind or with an animal shall be liable at the discretion of the court to be kept in penal servitude for life or for any term not less than 10 years. Looks like all those who tamper with animals in animal ag could be looking at a life sentence in the UK. Buggery is defined as anal intercourse. Is this not what the UK dairy industry does to non-consenting male and female animals when they probe restrained bulls for semen collection and use a fist to penetrate the rectum of female cows for insemination? It seems we've found a clear contradiction here. According to Animal Legal and Historical Centre College of Law, there are only four US states who do not have laws prohibiting the sexual assault of animals. So that leaves 46 states where animal agriculture is committing crimes against animals in the form of bestiality. Moving on to Australia, every state has laws prohibiting bestiality. In New South Wales, you could be looking at 14 years for fiddling around with the privates of an innocent animal. Looks like Australian animal farmers might be at risk of legal action for their offences against young and vulnerable sentient beings. What baffles me is that we live in a society that defends children vehemently against sexual predators. We understand the vulnerable and innocent nature of children, which is why we have hefty sentences and even street justice to combat sexual offenders. We also understand that children, just like animals, are not capable of giving consent for sexual acts. And let's not forget the trauma a young, confused child might experience after falling victim to this type of abuse. So couldn't we too compare the trauma experienced by beings of a similar sentient capacity, like those innocent animals in animal agriculture, who are literally sexually molested every second of every single day worldwide for animal products? Here we see Exposed by surge investigators, a worker who works at a dairy farm linked to the deputy president of the National Farmers Union, inappropriately interfering with a young cow's vagina. Watch as the young cow cowers towards him confused, as the offender comforts the cow by patting her on the face. This disturbing act resulted in disciplinary action against the perpetrator. Yet, 
the same type of animal abusing hypocrite dairy farmers who would discipline an individual like this for such a depraved act are every day facilitating the rape of male and female cattle under the guise of artificial insemination on dairy farms all across the world. But if it truly were artificial insemination, shouldn't the subject be consenting? It's legally required that human women give consent before artificial insemination, or any sexual act for that matter. If they are non-consenting, or, like a child, unable to consent, it's no longer artificial insemination. It's rape. Through the victim's eyes, from the animal's perspective, how are they to know the difference between a worker inappropriately touching them for sexual gratification, or a farmer inappropriately touching them for artificial insemination. Through the animal's eyes, they are being violated either way. This is all sexual abuse, and it needs to end. I have a suggestion. Considering the laws protecting animals from bestiality, how about we file a lawsuit against every single one of the sexual predators who molest animals for monetary gain? Or what about those good-hearted people who pay via supply and demand for the same sexual abuse that society appears to morally condemn. How do you feel as a consumer paying for the rape, violation and sexual abuse of young animals? Is it not you who are putting the animal abuser in business? Animal agriculture does not exist as it stands without the systematic sexual abuse of animals. So, if you oppose these crimes against animals, then it is an obligation that you oppose animal agriculture via your consumptive choices. To be vegan is to oppose all animal abuse.